Hi, I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy with another Global Real Estate School podcast. Well, thank you for joining the podcast today. I have a good friend of mine and actually one of my students. I don't know why he's a student, uh, Wayne Schoenberg. He's an attorney in St. Louis. And I told Wayne, I said, you know, you really don't have to go through my real estate school. But Wayne wanted to, he wanted to get a, a feel for what we go through as real estate agents. And uh, he's also a, a speaker and uh, a very good attorney. And you can see one of his famous clients behind him there as we, as we visit. But Wayne's a great guy, a great speaker. And he's doing more speaking in the real estate industry. So if you need a speaker who can talk about ethics, license law, any kind of legal issue, Wayne would be, I would highly recommend him. He's our past National Speakers Association president in St. Louis. But more than anything, he's just really a great guy. And so Wayne, thanks for joining and appreciate having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's just talk a little bit. I mean, you went through the real estate school. You, it's kind of, for me, sometimes I tell people who are going through my pre-licensed real estate school, it's a lot of, of legal definitions and terminology. And I was a little worried when you went through because I, I try to, when I'm covering a topic, I, in my mind, I'm always saying, I know we're teaching it, but it probably really depends legally if this is valid or not. But I mean, what were your thoughts about the school and just, you know? Oh, well, John, you know, I took the school because if I I thought if I were going to speak to real estate associations and real estate groups, that I really wanted to get a a good feel for what the agents were, were dealing with and the brokers and everything. And I knew that you had this school. And I know that as a lawyer, I don't have to take the school. I can just go take the test, but I don't want to have a license. I I don't need another license, Uh, but I I just wanted to see what they learned so that I could do better presentations, see what would be of interest to them. The school was fantastic. First of all, I was amazed at the, the depth into which it, it goes just really, really, I mean, it explains everything from uh, fee simple to uh, trust situations to how, you know, how people hold real estate tenancy in common, uh, joint tenants, all of which are really in, uh, important to, to know that, know that sort of thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other things that, that I had really not dealt with since law yeah. school. <laughs> The, the, you know, it's yeah. interesting. You talked about fee simple, but we also talk about the fee simple to feasible. And I know there's this little piece in the course where it says, if you fail to use the property for a certain type of use, it could revert back to the other owner. And it's interesting because I, I have a Google alert for Farmington, Missouri, and I saw this alert about the industrial park and lawmakers helping out. But when I read the story, what's interesting is the state had given the city this property, but it had an it had a exclusion or a, or a requirement that they had to use it for a certain type of purpose. And if they ever failed to do that, it would revert back to the state. <laughs> so they're like the title company wouldn't write title, and there's this big problem in trying to get the state to pass the law to to lift this. But so, yeah, we, I mean, those things we talk about do happen on a. Yes, they do. And and, uh, again, I was really impressed with the way that you went into it and explained it. It, it, first of all, it was a a very basic explanation, but it really went into depth on each one. And uh, again, it hadn't occurred to me Really, the, I remember back to my property classes, lear- learning these various things. It hadn't occurred to me really that real estate agents would have to confront such issues. So that was enlightening right there. Yeah. But what I really liked most of all, the, the, the when I was born, I stood in the long line, the wrong line, and they did not give me the math gene. Okay. <laughs> and so what I really liked in in the course 
was the way you explained and worked through the math problems. Your little T thing. Oh, is, thank is, you. Yeah, it's just great. I mean, that's, I went, wow, that seems so simple. How come I hadn't, nobody had yeah. taught me that before. So, so that was really helpful. That part really, really helped. Well, good. Now, as an attorney, speaking to new real estate licensees who might be watching, or even some of my existing licensee friends who've had a license for a while, I mean, what piece of advice would you give us from an attorney, from your legal side to make sure we don't get in trouble or that we're doing the right thing? Well, the most important thing I, I could say is that you need to keep up and keep current on what the rules and regulations are that you're dealing with. Um, as I went through this, uh, through this course, all of these things kept popping up. Um, you know, your listing agreement, uh, your broker disclosure agreement, little things that can trip people up. That is generally, in my experience as a lawyer of over 40 years, that is generally the thing that gets people in trouble is, is the inattention to detail. The, the little thing that you forget to do that maybe goes by unnoticed, maybe you get by with it, but if somebody comes along and, and brings it up, then you're in trouble. So paying attention to detail, knowing what's expected of you, getting your, your legal education and your, your C, we call them CLEs, continuing legal education, get just CEs in the real estate right. business, getting your 12 hours and, and really knowing what's expected of you. Most people deal from a, a position of honesty and integrity. And yet I see all sorts of people who end up in, in little legal problems not because their intention was bad, but because they didn't know what they were doing. They just right. That, that's a great point. And I love what you said about the little things, because I know I always remind my agents that it's the one that you let slide a little bit that always seems to come back and haunt you later on. And so really making sure that you are attentive to detail and staying up with the with the license law and the rule changes because things do change a lot. We have to be, um, we have to be aware of those. Now you're starting to do some coaching for real estate agents. Talk a little bit about what you would like to, or what you're envisioning, what you'd like to do. Cause I'd love for people who, who have a need to be able to reach out to you. Well, my coaching with real estate agents is really about increasing performance. And as a matter of fact, I just put a, a, um, video on Instagram today that talks about setting goals. John, real estate business is, is uh, in a, a little bit like the law business. I mean, I'm a, I'm a sole practitioner. I've run my own business since 1974. So what do I need? I need new clients and I need uh, people to come in uh, for, for advice. All right. Right. So as a real estate agent, first of all, you've got to know where you're going the beginning of this year, for instance, you want to set some goals. Well, people, people will generally say, look, I want to do better than I did last year. Well, that's not a goal. That, that may be a result, but the question is, how do you get there? So you say, well, I want to have more listings or I want to have more showings. Even those aren't, aren't goals. Goals need to be specific. So sit down and plan. Anytime you're in business, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a specific plan and you've got to have goals. So I work with, it was somebody would say, I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to make more money. Well, how are you going to make more money? Are you a listing agent? Are you a selling agent? Well, tell me where your money comes in. How do you get there? What is it that you're going to do? And I make my clients sit down and come up with a plan. And then as I say, I take over where their mother left off. I, right. I keep them accountable for, for doing that. So how many people are you going to talk to as an example, reaching out to people, you know, your best source of business, my best source of business is my old clients. I get referrals all the time from people, but if I don't keep in touch with them, they forget me. Right. Uh, so how do I get in touch with them? Well, I, I do my social media. I do a newsletter. I, I uh, send them birthday cards and, and uh, seasonal greetings. It takes work to do that, but it pays off. It's easier. It's 
more efficient and less costly to get repeat business and referrals than it is to go out and dig up a new one. So that's one of the things I do is make them really think about what a plan is. We come up with a plan in the early parts of it, work it through, get it all fleshed out, and by the end, send them out with, with that plan and, and uh, get results. Well, and I love that key point you said there too, is having someone like you who's coaching them, who can keep them accountable because yesterday I, I have a little app on my phone called the five minute journal. I think there was a book that was developed and I think the app's three or $4, but I love, I love this app because it notifies me at eight in the morning. Uh, what are you grateful for? And, and what are my goals for the day? And yesterday I set a goal just to call five different past clients and and I did that because I knew at the end of the day, my five minute journal asked me, so what'd you do today? Oh, that's great. But there's a lot of times, Wayne, that I can blow off the app because it's an app. But if I know I've got a coaching call with someone like you coming up on a weekly or every two weeks, uh, I want to make sure I'm getting those, those um, things done. So I think I, I love that, you know, you do have to have specific goals and the accountability piece I think comes in really, um, really handy. Um, and so um, anything else you want to kind of elaborate on, you know, well, on I'll, I'll share a story, share a story with you if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, there's a, a local businessman in St. Louis. He's, he's very wealthy extremely wealthy through his own efforts. He's extremely smart. He gets involved in startup companies and, and he's an IT guy. He's just an amazing guy. I've known him socially for many, many years. One day out of the blue, he calls me up and he says, I need you to coach me. And I thought, I think we've got this backwards. I, <laughs> he, yeah. <laughs> coach me. And, and I said, uh, well, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm honored. I'd be glad to do that. I said, what, what is it? He said, well, because of my position in the company, I'm so powerful in the curtain company that nobody holds me accountable. And he says, I know that you're coaching my friend, David. And David tells me that every Thursday evening, he's got to have this list of stuff done. And he said, I need, I need that. So everybody needs accountability and you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to call you out on something here. You know, right. Don't get on that Peloton as regularly as you should. Yeah, that's right. I will have to say I have, uh, I have a streak going and Saturday they had an outage and I could not, I, I actually rode the bike, but I couldn't log it. And it came back up about six o'clock in the evening, but I was like, I was too tired to get back on. But yeah, yeah you know, it is easy to get. And I know some, some people probably think Peloton, you paid a lot of money for that bike, but there is that accountability piece. Yeah that I look at and it has, it has helped me uh, and having a coach there telling you to turn that knob a little bit, but yeah, I'm working on it. So, well, uh, I really uh, appreciate Wayne so much. I try to keep the podcast kind of short. He uh, he's just been a, a good friend. He uh, is an amazing attorney, but he's doing some amazing things in the speaking field and, and I was just honored to have him go through my real estate course. And so I'm glad he liked it. And, and um, you know, it was great to have the feedback he gave me throughout the course. So we wanted to do a quick webinar. But I also wanted you to, uh, be, able to, reach, to be able to reach some of my uh, customers and clients that, you know, once you finish the real estate school, I know a lot of times people say, gosh, there's so many agents out there. Am I going to, how am I going to survive? But you can do it by setting goals, working with a coach and getting the right direction and vision on, on how to get to that point. So Wayne, yeah. tell them how they can get a hold of you if they're interested in coaching. Okay. Yeah. And, and what you say is true, John, because you know, I, I, I started out of law school. As a matter of fact, I wrote a book for, for young lawyers called No Clients, No Job, No Problem. I started out of law school just because a fluke of business I was supposed to go into didn't, didn't occur. And I hadn't applied for any jobs anywhere. So here I was and started out from nothing and turned that into a quite a successful industry. And it's the same thing when you finish that real estate school and you get your license, you look around and, and it seems overwhelming. 
and it can be, and that's the, that's the advantage of having a coach and somebody who will help you in those early stages. I wish when I started practicing law that I would have had that because I, I know that I stumbled over any number of places that I shouldn't have. So to get in touch with me, first of all, my phone number, 314-708-1000. Now, I have a website that's my name. And of course, my name is just brutal to spell, but it's Wayne, W-A-Y-N-E-S-C-H-O-E-N-E-B-E-R-G.com. And you can reach me through that or Wayne at WayneShoenberg.com. And I'll right? be editing this and I'll add that into the notes yeah. so they can see that too as well. Yeah. So thanks, Wayne. Sure. Yeah. You know, something that just dawned on me too, while you were going through that, and the reason I think that you, your connection with coaching real estate agents and being an attorney, some people might say, you know, do I want an attorney to be a coach for a real estate agent? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Because Wayne has done a lot of, a lot of trials in front of juries. And, it's, and when I was sitting here listening to you a minute ago, I thought, you know, when we go out on a listing appointment or we're working with buyers, a lot of times, and especially when we're new and we don't know anybody, it's kind of like we're presenting our case to the jury, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's why you need to hire me. And so, I mean, you know, what? just quickly, I mean, or briefly, I don't want to put you on the spot, but there probably are things you need to do in order to make sure a jury would warm up to you or, I mean, and I'm sure you could relate those types of, of, of um, tools or, or not that we ever want to deceive anyone, not that we're, I'm, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get a wrong, the wrong impression, but, but we do, there are persuasive techniques and there's nothing wrong with being persuasive but um, I don't know. So I'll quit and let you comment or maybe you. All right. Well, uh, you bring up an interesting subject and, and uh, I, there is a parallel, of course, between that. I, I was uh, a guest on Joel Block's webinar and the light sort of went off halfway through the, the, the web or podcast. The light went off kind of halfway through the podcast for Joel. He said, well, you're in the sales business. And I am in the sales business. <laughs> right. Well, if I'm trying a, a jury trial, I've got to sell a, a group of strangers come in who have no idea what I'm selling. And I have to convince them that it's going to be in their best interest to buy that by the time we're done. But just as importantly, when you talk about listing appointments or, or, or sales calls, all right, people... I do with, with sales every day when people call me to uh, figure out whether they want me to represent them. And there's a great parallel there because people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Right, exactly. And the lesson that I try to get across to everybody that's in the sales business is they buy on a personal relationship. And what you have to do is establish, is know how to establish a personal relationship with that person on the other side of the table or, or on the other side of the, the house, all right? And you do that by one of, the, one of the tricks that is used is storytelling. Right. People love stories. It doesn't have to be a long story. It can be just a little short story, but when, once you tell a little short story about yourself or the something that you were involved in, that person will open up and tell you a story. And exactly. pretty soon, yeah, and pretty soon you have this relationship going. And when they leave, and, and one other trick that my father taught me, is when you visit with people, ask them about themselves. Exactly. Don't tell them about you, because when you ask them about themselves, when they leave, they're going to say, you know, that was the smartest guy I've talked to in a long time. Right. And that establishes that relationship. And, and that relationship is uh, I just, let me digress for a minute. You can cut this out if you want to. No. That... But a, a kid just came in the other day. His father sent him in to see me. Uh, he had a, a DWI ticket. And we sat and we talked for a long time. And when he left, he said, I just, you, you've just really made me feel comfortable 
you've really, I, I really feel good now and I've, I, my anxiety's gone and, and everything. And that's as important to me as the outcome of the case, because the outcome of the case is going to be pretty good anyway. We, we know that already, but people need to feel comfortable. People want to feel comfortable. And if you can make them feel comfortable around you, you're going to establish that bond that they're going to like you. They're going to, they're going to feel like they know you through the stories and they're going to trust you. Exactly. It's interesting. You said stories because I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, we had a lady at our NSA meeting who was a storyteller. And I remember you saying, we tell, I tell stories all the time to the jury. And she was talking to us about telling stories to the audience, but a lot of times my daughter helps me with my real estate business now and we'll have a situation come up and I'll tell Ann, I'll say, now put that, that's a story that you could share with another client because people are going to ask you about how does this work or how does that work? And generally I have a story that I can share of why it's important to put more earnest money down or why it's important to, you know, make this type of an offer or, um, you know, people that I've worked with before. And it, it, as you said, it really brings that um, something in common with, with people. Sure. So uh, I just thought of that and I thought, wow, you really are a great fit for the real estate industry or sales in general for coaching because you probably nothing would be more challenging than as an attorney to go up in front of a bunch of strangers and say, I'm going to have to present my case to you and hope that you, that you, you believe me and trust me and that I'm, that I'm bringing you the information you need to know. So. Yeah. They have into, they haven't walked into a store with the mindset of buying. Right. One of them want to be there. Right. And, and you have to, to establish that relationship with guy. I had a bailiff tell me one time after the board dire, that's where you pick the jury. Bailiff said to me, he said, I thought you were just going to get up in the jury box with those people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what you want. Because I want them in, the, in that first hour that I spend with them, I want them to feel like they know me, feel like they can trust me, and, and hopefully like me. Exactly. And, yeah. And, you know, speaking of the Peloton bike, I had to, I was in St. Louis Sunday and I thought, I'm going to stop by the store there because I'd never been in there. And I went in and there were two ladies working and one young lady came over and it was real friendly. And I said, thanks. I said, yeah. She you know, asked me if I was familiar with the bikes. I said, yes, I own one. And immediately it was almost like, well, I'm not going to be able to sell him something. So she said, well, if I can help, let me know. And she just walked off. And I thought, gosh, she was almost a little bit rude. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I guess that getting to like people, you, how does she know I maybe wasn't looking or wanted to take information to a friend? You know, there's so. Uh, That's just what I was thinking when you were telling that story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could have been in there looking to, to refer somebody. Right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or buy a second one because my wife and I don't want to have to change our <laughs> settings. No, I'm not that. I, I'm, I'm not going to uh, spend money that uh, crazy, but anyway, maybe yeah. someday, who knows? So yeah. well, Wayne, thank you so much. And uh, again, I've, I'll put his information in the show notes below, but um, he liked global real estate school and would highly recommend it. Anything else you want to say and for or about I, global? I, I think the global real estate, I, I have to tell you, there aren't enough where, even as a speaker, there aren't enough words. I was really, really impressed I mean, there is, you have put some real work into that thing. And uh, I just say, I was impressed from a lawyer's point of view. I mean, there's, there is no stone left unturned in that thing. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Well, Wayne, as always, you, I appreciate your friendship and uh, be sure and reach out to Wayne. You're getting your real estate license. You want to grow your business afterwards. And I'm sure if they just need, I mean, I, there's probably not any long-term commitment. Maybe they just need yeah. some coaching the first 90 days, but um, you can't, you have to invest in, in yourself and education and coaching and helping you. I think those are huge. So thank you, Wayne. Thank you, John. Good to see you. You too. Thank you for listening to the podcast for Global Real Estate School. 
I'm John Mayfield, the real estate tech guy. Go out and make it a great day.